It's 835 uh, here on OTB AM this morning. It was, um, I was going to say, a night of the long knives yesterday at the New Camp and the surrounds of uh, Barcelona Football Club, but it was actually about a week of uh, long knives and eventually Ernesto Valverde got sacked and uh, replaced almost immediately. I'm delighted. So we've got Graeme Hunter on the line. Graeme, you've had some uh, brilliant analogies on your Twitter account to uh, promote your ESPN column about uh, how well this was handled or otherwise. And not very was um, the, the uh, too long, didn't read version of it. But uh, I do admire Kike Setien's football, but Barca have handled the whole business with the calm aplomb of a one-handed blind man trying to juggle a wet salmon. Truly, they did. Yeah, I only say that because I've seen that event. It's annual up in Aberdeen. And um, it gives you great uh, analogies for the ineptitude of the way that Football Club Barcelona have, have handled this process. And my purpose in writing the column I did for ESPN talking to you um, isn't to sort of say poor old Ernesto Valverde, um, because it's, a, and it's an extremely tough club. Um, you all witnessed the horrible defeat in Rome, then the still more horrifying defeat in Anfield. If you've been watching Spanish football and Premier Sports, you'll have seen um, equivalent flaccid displays away at Athletic, at Levante, at Granada, for much of the game in Dortmund, for much of the game in Prague. And clubs retain the right to dismiss a manager, to sell a player. It's part and parcel. I think those who argue that Valverde's time was up at the end of last season patently had a case despite this trophy haul. But when you come to this juncture and you decide that you'll sack the manager after, OK, I defeat you at Leti in Saudi Arabia in the semi-final of the Super Cup, but I'm, I'm guessing you didn't have a chance to watch it, but Barcelona actually played with a conviction and a verve uh, that they haven't shown for much of this season, certainly away from Camp Nou. They took Atleti apart for the large part of the game, then fell apart in the last 15 minutes, conceded a couple of goals, lost 3-2. They'd had two goals uh, disallowed, one of which I think was wrongly disallowed. They'd played far, far better than Atleti. So it's a strange trigger, guys, that that's their choice. But unless Bartomeu and his board sort of weren't at Anfield or have got early onset. The plan B should have been simmering since at least then. And a plan B um, implies that you have candidates, that you have a strategy, that you've decided how you will handle the succession to Valverde. And they thrash around going to Chavi, going to his uh, workplace, rather than say sorting on the phone, which could have been done could have been low profile, would have saved the club and the board humiliation of Chavi saying, no, not now, you idiots. I'm also I'm tied to Victor Font, the candidate who wants to win the next elections. I'm in a cup final on Friday. I'm earning huge money. It's mid-season. What are you thinking about? Um, what do we do next? Uh, let's, let's approach a guy who's equally committed to, say, Holland, and the idea that Holland might win the Euros this summer. Koeman's already pointed out that he wouldn't come during the build-up to the Euros. So they ask him, ah, Ronald, would you like to be sick? No. Second choice? No. Okay, third choice, Pochettino, who said he'd rather go back and work on his farm than coach Barcelona, and is absolutely 100% sure in his own mind he's the next Manchester United coach. They, because Ramon Plan is uh, one of the Barca executives, is a very friendly relationship with Pochettino, they sound him out, and it immediately comes out and here's Kiki Setien. If you sack Valverde, um, irrespective of the fact that they've done it in a brutal, ham-fisted, ugly, embarrassing way, which they didn't need to, for their own benefit, let alone his, um, Kiki Setien takes charge this morning in a double session, which the players have not had to um, endure in uh, mid-season since Guardiola was in charge. Kiki Setien's got to come in and convince these hard-nosed, battle-scarred, world-class multimillionaires with them knowing that he was fourth choice. Brilliant work. I just say Bartomeu on the board. Oh, hey, yeah, super. Well, what's the player's view in all of this, Graham? No, I don't know. I, I can anticipate on because since this broke, there has been no chance to, to speak to players. Um, there, there was... 
a fairly um, muted. I mean, listen, it didn't happen until what the, the actual announcement that Valverde was sacked didn't happen until over here. I think approximately eleven o'clock last night. So the social media will be the, there's no point in uh, hiding the fact that social media will be our first barometer. Frankie De Jong said thank you and goodbye immediately to uh, Valverde. He's a polite young man. Um, the players had Valverde's back in some ways because they spoke out about him. They liked working under him. While while they were sharper and fitter, his light hand on the tiller was 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 fine. His first season was nearly exemplary, um, if you pardon him, the Roma defeat. And I would imagine that their view is that, that, that they've lost an ally. He certainly got on very well, Leo Messi. But um, their view of Kiki Setien will be that they know he's a quality coach. They know that he is an absolute evangelistic um, lover of the Cruyff values that made Barcelona what it is in the modern era. But are they able to play that way anymore? Are they physically um, fast enough? Are they have, Do they have physically enough stamina to quadruple the movement that they've shown this season on the pitch? Do they have the mental commitment to press, to provide passing options all the time rather than consistently looking for Suarez and Messi? Suarez now out for four months. They're... they're uh, welcome for Kiki Setien will be qualified because while they're able to play the brand of football he wants in terms of concept and intellectually, I'm not quite sure that they're as a group ready to put in the amount of physical work, able to put in the amount of physical work that his style will demand. So there will be, I suppose there will be victims. As he says, I will pick the 11 that are best able to apply my principles rather than the Acknowledged best eleven, gala eleven. Yeah, we should we should um, just to to spill back a bit. This guy's like sixty and has coached um, in lower divisions for years and years and years and years, and and has been a, a strong believer that um, bad footballers can be coached to become good footballers, and that they can play good football even if they're in the lower tiers, and that you should have the courage of your convictions, irrespective of who your opponents are. The type of things that make him bloody minded and experienced. Sometimes these things have a habit of working out. This might be the precise right time for him to get the, the late era Leo Messi and to rescue the situation. Um, I do appreciate your sense of optimism there. <laughs> so nice to put case. Um, he certainly believes what you have described. He was a hard-working, um, pretty tough-minded ordinary-ish midfielder, workaday midfielder, who got tired and has explained beautifully his conversion, his Damascus conversion, um, in that he, he just got tired of running after Johan Cruyff's teams. And he explains subsequently, he went, oh, that's, that's, this is how you do it. You know, this is the way to play football. And, and like somebody who has smoked all their life, quits, becomes a non-smoker, it's absolute, the conversion is absolute. And he has been able to make teams uh, use possession, use width, use pressing um, in in ways that have been gorgeous to watch. Particularly laterally, it, it didn't his uh, his conviction about his principles and his ability to teach didn't always work. But if you take the last two um, iterations of of, his, of this philosophy at Las Palmas and then at Betis. It was fantastic to watch, certainly from the point of view that I have, but what what football is for, how a game should be played. He, he made uh, teams with footballers who are less than, than the group that he's inheriting now play a, a version of football that Cruyff would have loved, did love. Johan Cruyff's Twitter, although we lost a great man a couple of years ago, Johan Cruyff's Twitter immediately said the, the most Cruyffist coach of, of 2018, they awarded him that, is now in charge a, a, a club that Cruyff loved. And therefore, a fantastic uh, news as far as they're concerned. But can he convince, I, I really meant what I said, that to, to play that way, you have to use real width. That will expose the center of the pitch. We've been looking all season and last season at Sergio Busquets now being pressed more often. The, a single error of, of half a metre, a quarter of a metre in a pass or a movement, and he's exposed. 
if you look at the the amount of running Messi does um, up front, it's it's next to zero without the ball. If you think about um, the the lack of control in midfield, that where De Jong has been a big hit, but he's used to running past players, going through lines rather than waiting and passing and and, and um, circulating the ball, to drag teams apart. They'll now be very reliant on Griezmann, who's not been brought up in this concept and has been working his damnedest to understand even the remainders of the Cruyff version that he, he came into at Football Club Barcelona. Kiki Setien has got a, a gigantic task in his hands. If he succeeds, then exactly like you said, uh, it, uh, and, and kind of rescues the, the latter years of Leo Messi, it will be an extraordinary story. And as a neutral, I will I will wait to watch his football because it will probably be better than what we've seen from Valverde once he gets the conditions right. And you don't snap your fingers in mid-season and make 30, 31, 32-year-old players run twice, three, four times as much as they've been doing so far. I realise that he was fourth choice, but he's he's actually the best solution. Like, Pochettino... Well, why not go to him directly then in that case? Well, uh, it was, it's, it's our job to point out idiocy in football, wherever it is. So why not go Xavi by phone, but he probably won't come because he's tied to the incoming presidential candidate. And has no Could experience. Come. Pochettino says he hates us. Go straight to Setien then. No? I agree. I agree 100%. They've, I, what I'm saying is I think they've fluked into the best case scenario here. <laughs> they may have done. They may have done. I think that um, there will be a reception for Kiki Setien from club, staff, players, fans, media, which accepts that he is redolent of the time, times, Christ Dream Team, Guardiola's team, when this club has enjoyed itself most, felt most proud. There is an identity about Setien which fits with a lost identity at, at the camp now. It, it, the, the Cruyff ideas, the Guardiola ideas, haven't gone completely. They've just been whittled away at so consistently that asking one man coming in mid-season as fourth choice to re-establish them is is a gigantic ask. It, it genuinely is. Um, I'm not saying that this board will automatically sack him in the summer, treat him like they treated Bobby Robson when they took Robson in for one season, knowing that get Van Hal at the end of that season, irrespective of what Bobby did. I'm not saying that. City has got a contract now until 2022, which goes beyond the current president's mandate. That's already strange. There will be some players thinking, yeah, Chavi said not now, but maybe in the summer. There will be some players thinking, yeah, if I don't enjoy this or if I can't do the, the extraordinary amount of work and running that, that this guy needs, then in the summer it will be Chavi again. Whether it is going to be or not, that, that impression will remain amongst some of the players. Mm. It, I, I, I'm trying to express that Barcelona should have been better prepared for their own footballing benefit could have handled this completely differently with a great deal of ease. I'm using the word idiot deliberately, and I'm pointing out that Kiki Setien, although coming to the right club for him, it's probably, if it's not at the wrong time, it's at a time which will be extraordinarily difficult for him. A great sketch for us to watch. Yeah. Fascinating for us to watch. I'm looking forward to it. Graham, great stuff. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Cheers, lads. And uh, that's one of the great all-time analogies, um, which we started that with.